everyone, and welcome to Think Future. My name is Chris Calabugas, and once again, we're coming at you live from deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. Deep, deep, deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking to innovation startups, the future, not necessarily those, and not necessarily in that order. If you watch on YouTube, smack that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening to our favorite podcast server, please subscribe and please drop a note on Apple Podcasts. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, I've read this the other day and I thought, this is great. This is great because let's say you are an artist, right? Let's say you're an artist or a creative person and you've created some kind of persona, some kind of brand. I don't know, maybe you're Kanye West or... I don't know, you're some influencer or whatever. So you have created, you have spent a lot of time building a brand, creating music, creating art, creating something, and you're, or an, you're an influencer and you have followers and you have a brand and you have a personality. You have something that people are drawn to, something of demand. And when you distill it down, it's actually IP, right? It's intellectual property. It is the representation of you. And if someone were to steal this representation of you, you'd be very unhappy because you'd go, well, not only is this person not me, they're making, they probably are making money off of me. And not only that, they might do something that is a little off brand and might put off people and destroy my brand. It's my reputation that they're stealing from me and they're doing something untoward, something that I don't agree with. So if you've created this kind of a brand, if you have a brand, if you're, if you're a creative person, if you've got influencers, followers, if you're an influencer, if you have followers or whatever, even whether you're a major uh, force in the industry or somebody smaller, it doesn't really matter because this is stuff that you personally created. And if you personally created, you own it. It's yours, right? And someone taking it, stealing it, plagiarizing it and, and sh putting it off as theirs and making money off it, even though it was your blood, sweat, and tears that created it, that's got to stick in your craw, right? That's got to piss you off. So give me an example of something like Star Wars parodies, right? So when Star Wars used to be with Lucasfilm, people would parody Star Wars all the time. People would make, make jokes about Star Wars, or they would insert Darth Vader or th stuff like that into culture. And they even did things that were kind of on the edge of probably something that you wouldn't want done to your IP. But prior to Disney owning Star Wars, Lucasfilm was okay with it because they were a lot more free with their IP. They were like, okay, you know what? Even if we have you know, Darth Vader in a pink tutu <laughs> in something, then at least it's still Darth Vader. And people get the joke. Darth Vader doesn't wear pink tutus. They know that Darth Vader doesn't wear pink tutus. It's a joke. It's fun. It's still, you know, even though it's way off brand for somebody like Darth Vader, it still pushes the Star Wars meme into the culture. So it's almost like Star, Star Wars has become part of the fabric of the culture. It's gone beyond being simply IP. And then, of course, once Star Wars was sucked into the Disney universe, then I'm sure that they're much, much stricter about representations of any Star Wars characters because it's now their IP and Disney is very, very strict about their IP. And maybe they grant, I know that I've seen stuff like, I've seen Star Warsy and stuff that's not particular, that seems like a little edgy to be Disney, but maybe they had some kind of grandfathered contract saying that anything that's in force at this point or anything that's prior to this date it was okay, but anything after this day, you can't make fun of Darth Vader anymore. So what's happened is that creators completely understand. I completely understand if a creator is looking at somebody taking their work. And of course, nowadays, you can use AI to take somebody's work. You can use AI to take somebody's work and create something that is so close to a creator's actual work that people may mistake it for the creator's work. Because let's say, for example, you went in and created a uh, fake Michael Jackson song or something like that. No, okay, he's dead. Let, let's pick somebody else. Say you create a, I don't know, pick an, an artist who's alive, Dua Lipa. Say you picked a, created a fake Dua Lipa song, right? If you personally created it, then 
you would probably someone probably with a with a trained ear would be able to tell that it was a fake song right but if you use ai to generate this and ai can do an amazing job of generating a copy of work that sounds so close to the original that human beings cannot tell the difference from the original work if somebody went in there and used ai to create a version or a new song by somebody without their consent and then posted it somewhere and then made a ton of money off it or at least gained a ton of followers off it then the original creator would be pissed off about that right wouldn't you think now i read and i'm not sure who's doing this but some creators out there are saying you know what that's not such a bad thing maybe they're doing the same kind of thing that george lucas did with star wars they're saying that even if somebody goes out there and uses my likeness and my sound and my voice in my IP to create something new with AI I'm gonna be okay with it as long as I get some royalties out of it if you think about it it's almost like the ultimate it's almost like taking a um, developer community and moving it to the creative realm right if you could conceivably Let's think about a Twitter. Twitter was monolithic, and then they opened up a developer ecosystem, which allowed you to build applications on top of Twitter and use Twitter and integrate with Twitter. And think of it this way. The co these content providers can be building their own developer ecosystem, which is people who are taking their likeness and their music and their sound and creating new work using their likeness and the music and their sound but they're not doing it. The original creator's not doing it. They're using AI and to for somebody to come in and they use AI to create a version of this which is still branded by the original creator. So the original creator is not creating the work. Somebody else is creating the work. And typically you would think the original creator would go, no way, lock that person down. We don't want that person to create anything that looks like my likeness. But very enterprising creators are saying, you know what? You can do that as long as we so we, we do it more officially. We'll license it to you and you pay me royalties on the use of my IP to create that song that sounds like me. So I can totally see somebody like Kanye West doing something like that. He goes, you want to create a new Kanye song? Here, here's my discography. Here's everything that I have. Sign this contract and you know, 20, 30, 40% of the royalties that you make off this track, which is a AI-based Kanye West track, which people might buy and enjoy and love and think, well, it sounds just like him. But it's been created by some other guy in Kanye's image. That is the future of content creation. Now, the question is, will we ever see, and I think we're starting to see this now, we see things like... Um, what was the name of that avatar, that uh, Japanese avatar, who's not a real person? Is they're, they're a they're an avatar, and they've created so much music, and they're not a real person. And I forget her name, but that's where we're seeing. That's where we're going to see next. We're going to see uh, people who are created ai-based individuals who are just created and there's a few of them out there right now there's a few of them right, right now and what's happening is that they're going to be easier and easier and easier to create because right now they're still fairly difficult to create realistic ones they're going to get easier and easier and easier to create and then we're going to see a fully ai generated personality an influencer who is going to be generated cr completely on the fly without human intervention whatsoever, maybe even using auto GPT. And they're going to become a social media superstar. So I'd love to see that first social media superstar, fully AI generated, maybe one small prompt by its creator, creating an entire ecosystem of content from this fully AI generated social media superstar because a lot of these social media superstars these AI generated or sorry these these not real avatar 
social media superstars still have huge teams of humans behind them to create them. So we will see that soon. So not only are we seeing creators allowing a developer ecosystem of individuals to, to use their IP to create new music for them or create new stuff for them, we're also going to see the first ever fully AI generated and managed and maintained social media superstar probably before the end of this year that's it for me for today see you next time and until then don't forget to think future